Hey there, everybody. This is CP Cards and Dice, and welcome to Tabletop Baseball TV. And today we're looking into the Deep Drive gaming system and their cards. You know, Deep Drive Baseball, you get through PDF only, not mailing any cards at this point. So you need to print out uh, the, the cards. If you choose to print them out, I mean, you can actually bring them up on the screen, uh, and that costs you nothing. Because like the, the, the main starters, the eight main starters are on one page. So you could bring this page up and just go, you know, jump around from player to player um, and so on. But let me, that's the teams usually, the main guys, the guys that played, you know, 95% of the time are on um, four or five primary pages. And this is how it comes. Basically it comes nine to a page. This page in particular starts off, but it has a Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland Stadium. This is my set from 1971 because I've been replaying the 1971 Swinging A's, and I don't know if you've been watching that, but uh, you should tune in and check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, those were teams that, when I in my you know adolescence, I really kind of admired. I saw them as kind of you know cool and interesting and and progressive and and willing to you know talented and and willing to push you know, uh, the, the envelope, the limits of, of what was, you know, acceptable and wasn't. So that, that, that had a mystique for me of, you know, uh, of rebellion. And, and that was, that was an interesting, um, I don't know, vision or understanding that I had of, of the, the swinging A's of the early seventies. But anyway, here's one of the teams that they're going to be facing in their upcoming, uh, schedule. Hey there. Sports Time Machine. How are you, brother? Very cool. I'm going over the cards for people that want to do that. Okay, so I'm going over the cards, and I'm going to kind of be writing on them a little bit and circling them and that sort of thing. So this is uh, the pages I printed out, the Cleveland Indians, because this is one of the upcoming teams on my schedule. I'm playing the actual schedule for 71, and the great thing about Deep Drive Baseball is you get every single player. All right, now you can, play, you can pay – you know, $140 for every single player on APA. Or you can play, get pay $12 for every single player using this very cool system. Easy to play. It's fun. And uh, and I, I don't know what else to say. So let's go over the cards so you understand how they work. First of all, this is the uh, – it's a 50-50 system. Now, I'm not a huge fan of 50-50 systems, but I understand that it's all about – percentages and ultimately that's what happens so let's look at greg nettles uh greg nettles uh, your average third baseman is a three but greg nettles is what he's a five so that says he is the top he's a top notch third baseman and this is in 71 he's not even with the yankees yet all right during the yankee years in the late mid late 70s he was in the early 80s he was known as the premier third baseman in the league but 71, 10 years before that, he's already performing at a very extremely high level. So he's going to be a five. So he's going to make a lot of diving plays and a lot of web gems. Okay. Now your average player, Vita Pinson in center field, that's his main position. For example, Nettles only plays one position, whereas Vita, Vita, uh, Veda, I'm sorry, Veda Pinson is um, rated for center field, right field, and left field field in other words he's played enough at those positions to get rated to warrant a rating but he's three at all those positions and the three is kind of your typical uh major league player all right he'll get to some balls he'll miss other balls all right but he's not going to make all the great plays all the time so those are those are the fielding positions up here in the upper left hand corner is what he bats his batting you got lefty 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 righty for ray fossey righty for eddie leon chris chandler's another lefty oh say so Chris Chemless, he's a 70s Yankee, and so is Nettles. So both of those guys played together on the, uh, the, the dynasty, the Yankee late 70s dynasty, which is very cool. So they knew each other for a while, and they both played the corners for many, many years. I think they may have played one more time together with the Atlanta Braves in the late mid to late 80s off the top of my head. I don't know if I'm right about that or if I'm not. But anyway, all right, so the next part is this is your, your – box for the results when you roll the two for example right an 89 you would look in this box right here 
I'm, I'm sorry, 89 would be on the pitcher's card. So that doesn't work. So it'd have to be like a 20, 49 or a 43. Let's guess it. So because it's 0, 0 to 49 on the batter card. So a 43 would be right here between 22 and 49. And that would end up being an out. What kind of an out? Well, the green dot is going to tell you. It's a five. It's a five out. It's a hard hit ground ball to the shortstop. And everything, nine, well, not everything, 99% of everything is off the, car, off the cards. You don't really have to look at the charts. Now, I'm going to do part two on this tutorial. It's going to be called uh, Deep Drive Baseball, the charts tutorial. And you should check that out as well because I'll be going over the charts and go how to read those charts and so on and so forth. All right. So now. That's we went over this section here. Let's go over the deep drive section. So when you get, for example, on Greg Nettles' card, if you roll a 0, zero to a zero, 03, so zero, 00, right, to zero, 03 is going to be a deep drive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-roll, okay, on the deep drive chart. And it's a 20. All right. So that falls within the 0 to 56 home run range. Now, Greg Nettles had 28 home runs. Wow. That's pretty good in 1971. Okay, I expect him to do that in the, in the late mid-70s, but 71 already so soon. He's up. Oh, relax. Sit down. Go to your chair. All right. So um, so 20 would be a 0-0 zero, zero to 56 home run, but there's a little insignia there after the home run, and that says, hey, you better check the park because in some parks – this is, may not be a home run, okay? So, for example, uh, <clears throat> anything that's zero, 0 to zero 09, you would have to roll the green die. And let's say you're playing in Anaheim Park, okay? A 9 would be a fly ball to deep right field, okay? If it rolled, it, see, not the 20. The 20 is outside the 0, 0 to 0, 9. So this would be an automatic home run. The 20 would be an automatic home run. But let's say if I rolled between the 0, 0 and the 0, 9, like I rolled a, a 0, 7, that's between the 0, 0 and the 0, 9 that says up here, then I would have to look at the park. And if I'm playing in Anaheim Stadium or if I'm playing in Cleveland Stadium, let's say I'm playing in Cleveland Stadium, and that would be, well, it wouldn't be a fly ball to – it would be a fly ball to center field. It wouldn't be a fly ball to right field. It's a lot of home runs. It's easy to hit home runs to left field and right field, okay, off of this ballpark card, all right? So this would have been a fly ball to center field because I rolled a nine. Now, had I rolled as anything from zero to seven, a, 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 well, the original was a 20. Now, zero, seven, up to nine, right, up to nine. So, so meaning – if I roll a zero, 0, or a zero, 1, or a zero, 2, or a zero, 3, or a zero, 4, or a zero, 5, or a zero, 6, or a zero, 7, 8, up to a zero, 9, I would have to look at the green die. And a 6 would be a home run at, at, at Cleveland Stadium. Look at that. Zero to, zero, to, 0 to 7. So a 6 would be a home run. A 0 would be a home run. A 1 would be a home run. A 1 would be a home run. 3 would be a home run. A 7 would be a home run. You see, I'm not rolling any high numbers. But if I rolled a nine, it wouldn't be a home run. It would be a fly out to center field. Why? Because I rolled within that zero, zero to zero, nine, and that section here has a, has a rating, has an insignia or a symbol, if you will. Now, fly balls also have a symbol right here. So you can hit a home run off a fly ball. Okay, so you get a, um, in this case, 95 to 99 would, would could be a, um, Yeah, if you roll there, that's that's an automatic. That's going to be an automatic out. You're well, you're. It could be a home run if you roll zero zero seven to anything, anything below, whatever the park is. In other words, this says you got to check out the park. Basically, this says you got to check out the park. Okay, so ninety five to ninety nine would be a park check, and it could be a fly ball if it's outside the park check, right? So a seven would be a home run. A nine would be outside the park check because it only goes to seven. So it would be zero nine would be a fly ball to deep center field. All right. So I hope I explained that. That's like a little bit complicated, but not really um, once you get the hang of it. So that's a deep drive chart. And you can hit that from the pitcher's card or from the batter's card, depending. Pitchers also have deep drive uh, 
results as well. Pitchers that give up a lot of home runs, guess what? They have a lot of deep drive results. All right, so let's see what else. Let's look at the defense. Let's continue looking at the defense. Let's look at the catcher defense. You got a rating for a pass ball, and you sometimes you have a rating for a, a it's a hold rating. Okay, and it could be a minus one or it could be a plus one. This catcher has none, so that means there's no rating there. You got your steal rating. This is a 1B. You got your run rating. He's average, but he becomes fast with two outs. Let's see somebody who's a little bit faster. There's nobody. Your typical guy is a blank. This is your typical guy, a blank. But all these blanks become fast with two outs. Just remember that. Two outs, they become fast. It tells you your team record down here. They weren't very good. They were in sixth place, 60 and 0-2. Let's see how I'm doing. I got about four minutes left. I want to go to the pitcher cards. So I think I've covered everything. The steal rating, the higher the number, the better it is. So Pinson is better than, than uh, Greg Nettles. Um, and that's it. So the best guy on this card for base stealing is Veda Pinson. He has a three because he stole 25 bases. Look at that. Now that three can improve, become, become a four, five, or six, depending on the catcher's ability and the pitcher's ability. And we're going to look at that now. So I think I've covered everything on that ca on this card. Um, the rare issue is basically if the roll, if the green die roll is below the number, it would be a base on balls. So when you get something that's a rare, you look on the batter, like it's if it's a base on balls on the pitcher card, uh, you would look at, at rare here. Okay, and you would see that in his case, he doesn't walk very often. So that means um, he's not gonna he's not gonna walk. Okay, but all right, okay, all right, my bud. All right, you want me to open the door for you? Huh? Let's see. Oh, all right, all right, let's see. There. All right, so um, so I want to go to pitcher card. So that's I want to go to the pitcher card. Maybe locked in from the other door as well. I gotta may have to open that for him. All right, let's look at some pitcher cards. There's some things that I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna get to. I don't have enough time. Yep, he's locked in from the other door. Hold on. All right, um, let's look at a pitcher card. Let's see. Now, Lowenstein over here, he's got uh, a one at right field, not good, a, a three at left field, good, and a one at shortstop, not very good. So the one, the ones and the twos are really going to give you trouble. Um, this is a pitcher hitting card. It has the D, and you know by because it has a deep drive. That's an easy way of finding that. Now, when it says endurance, that means that's his regular pitching card. Now, look at the hold. Hold is a plus one on this. So he allows extra base stealing opportunities. This McDowell has a minus one on a hold. And Vince, oh, this is a – see, that, that one's a, a pitcher hitting card. Let's look for an endurance card. He has a hold of minus ten. That means no, but he doesn't he, – he, he absolutely allows no base stealing. Mike Paul, he's a lefty, probably has a really good move and has probably a good pickoff. Uh, he doesn't have a really good pickoff, but he just has a – he didn't allow any stolen bases against him, basically. Hand is a plus one. Foster's a plus one, so they allow base stealing. Now you got your wild pitch rating, you got your bulk rating, and you got your pickoff rating, and that's all on one chart. It's not complicated. How many days he has to rest and his batting card letter. So you got a bunch of batting cards, and this is the letter. He's a B, he's a D, he's an F. That's what you got. These, these, the thing I love about these cards are they're so uncluttered. Okay, these cards are so uncluttered. They're so easy to read. The no, the fonts are nice and big. You know, I really now the out section for all the cards is is at the bottom, so you don't have to look up the outs for any chart. It has you know pop ups and line outs. And you get a fair mix of almost everything here. That's something I really like about this game. Okay, you're getting your line outs, you're getting your pop-ups, you're getting your ground outs, you're getting, you know, your fly balls. And it not only that, it tells you what type of ground out it is. Right? It tells you it's a slow ground out or it's a hard ground out or it's a medium ground out. And that's important for in terms of can you turn a double play? 
Usually on the slows, you're never going to get a double play. Very unusual. The medium, sometimes. On the hards, almost always. That's like a tailor-made double play. And then you got your deep fly balls, your shallow fly balls. That's, I mean, there's so many little nuanced details. And it also, the, the type of hit that it is affects the result as well. So believe it or not, it's, it's really. Now I'm looking for a pitcher here. Look, Ed Farmer, you see that? I wanted to find a guy that has nothing there. He has no hold rating. That, that means he's not plus and he's not minus. He's kind of right in the middle. This is a norm-based uh, game. In other words, they find the norm, and if you're better than the norm, you, you're given you know an advantage. If you're worse than the norm, you're given a disadvantage. But if you're at the norm, you're just a decent major league player you know, in terms of allowing bases to be stolen. Now look at Rick Austin. He's a plus two, allows stolen bases at a plus two. Whereas Chuck uh, Mechim, uh, Mechimel, right? Look, that's, I think how, that's how you pronounce it. Chuck Mechimel is a minus 10. He doesn't allow any stolen bases. But Austin allows plus two. So if you get Austin with a catcher that's not very good, and that's another plus two, that's a plus four, plus the guy's a, a 4A, right? And then you're in trouble because this guy is going to be probably 70% of the opportunity. He's, he's probably going to be safe 70% of the time. So I wanted to do a little bit on the cards. I really like these cards. And I wanted to give guys the opportunity to kind of look at them um, and to hear what they're about. Here also at the bottom, you get the stats for the player in that season. One thing I do like, I really like about uh, – another thing I do like about deep drive baseball is that it tells you who your closer is. Okay, it tells you who your closer is. So right here is a starting pitcher. He can go seven points, 10 points, 11, 11 points. The, more, the higher the points, the longer he can go. Uh, let's see. More, more pitchers. Um, he's, a, he's a relief pitcher and a starting pitcher, Ed Farmer. Okay. Let's see. Oh, my closer is Phil Hennigan. Closer, two innings. Why is he a closer? You have 14 saves. Okay. That's usually how it works. A lot of all these players are rated for uh, relief pitching and starting pitching. Ray Lamb, Vince Colbert, Steve Hargan. This is the 71 Cleveland Indians. Phil Hennigan, Ed Farmer, Steve Mingori. Uh, Hennigan is only a closer, and Mingori is only a relief pitcher. These other uh, four guys are starters slash relievers. Then you got Ballinger, who's only a reliever. You got Austin, who's only a reliever, and you got another Mechimel that's only a reliever as well. All right, so I just wanted to go over the cards a little bit for guys that want to, you know, maybe have questions about what does this mean, what does that mean. Um, for example, this pitcher, this is his batting card. You get a lot of batting cards with deep drive baseball. Anybody who has a, you know, a handful of at bats is going to get a batting card. In this case, he's an F running. Okay, Vince Colbert. Um, who else? LeBray Lamb is a, uh, an F running. Lou Camille is an S. That means he's slow. He's fast. Now this is all, not only speed, although it's represented that way. Alan Foster's fast. This is base running ability based on the runs scored. If you didn't have any runs scored, you're not going to get an F. Okay. Um, it's just the way the game goes. I mean, it goes by how many runs scored there were in the league, and then if you're above that, you're faster. You're going to get more opportunities. If you're below that, well, you're chugging along, and you're not going to get a lot of opportunities. That's how the game is played. Uh, some guys have a blank. That means they're not – that's also in the running chart, just no, no, no result at all, okay? And that means you're kind of right at the norm, at the league norm. He's above the league norm. He's an F. He's way below the league norm. He's a F, a VS, very slow. You can also have a very fast. We, ha we have none of those here. Another very slow first baseman and catchers are usually the very slow. Um, this is a second baseman, Bavak, when he's slow. And that has to do with his run scored. That's how it works. Uh, catcher, pass ball rating. He has no hold. So I saw two catchers that have no hold. That means it's not a plus or it's not a minus. You just ignore it. And that's the way these cards are. So this is – I just wanted to go over the cards with Deep Drive Baseball. In case you have any questions, let me know. Contact me at uh, – you can – jhmetros at gmail.com. Uh, you, you can ask me questions there. You can ask me questions on the, on the video. 
Take care, guys. This is CP Cards and Dice for Tabletop TV. Um, I hope this was informative and it helped you a little bit become a little bit more familiar with the cards. And I'm going to start cutting them out now. And let me finish up the video by cutting out these cards. Right? I'm going to show you. you got a, a, a Lishan cutter. And uh, it's pretty cool. It works. And later on, if I have to trim them, I'll trim them. But it's better than getting it too close. And I'm preparing these cards to have the team ready. I want to have all the American League teams ready. That's it. Now I got to do three more cuts, and then I start. Then I take a scissor. And you got to do this with uh, deep drive baseball, or you got to take them to your local, you know, your local uh, Office Depot or Office Max or whatever that is, and uh, and have them do this for you. Uh, to be, I'm not. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of doing this. Uh, some guys kind of enjoy it; it's relaxing for them. To me, it's kind of annoying. I'd rather have them cut for me already. But then again, I, then I couldn't write on the cards. I can't lose a card because I only have one set, and I would have to pay $60 for another set. This way, I can lose cards. I can mess up cards. I can miscut cards. I can pour, you know, I can uh, spill coffee on the cards, and, and I'm going to be all right. There you go. All right, so this is CP Cards and Dice saying thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.